Right, this is called The Musician's Testament. It was recently published online with the uh, online International Times. It's a reflection on, um, you know, the role of self-destruct mentality um, among musicians, amongst those in search of fame and stardom particularly. The Musician's Testament. Being a living legend is such a precarious livelihood. What a ducking of responsibility. John Cale said that. Success means being worried about everything else except money. Johnny Cash said that. I'm putting down this last eyewitness account leading up to zero hour because all the registers have gone into the red. Everything's going to blow. If I'm stopped in mid-sentence, that will be far more meaningful than anything fully articulated anything remotely retrospective. The circuits are overloaded, all the knobs are turned up at full blast, the membranes are bloated with acrid gas, within a hair's breadth of splitting, there's a mass of lights winking through the window, threading through the cobwebs, any one of them may parallel a final signal, this chewed up cracked biro may burst before everything else does. It'll have to be me or the world, so I'm saying it's got to be the world, because I am the world. I got the tip off on the cusp of my high, and everyone else will be swept into the chasm before me. Even as it yawns, that brooding cavern threatens to vomit its poison. Only the ignorant will survive to benefit. Soon the industrial archaeologists will have a great time rooting out where the mines were. Such fragments will give those grimed, bedraggled survivors some skeletal guide to their reconstruction work. Shades of ditching school books and hitting the road. There'll be overloaded, short-circuited amplifiers in sync with the next terrorist attack. I hope that blast of sirens in the background is in sync with its prevention. All sentient beings have witnessed mingling, fleeting bondings, and sensed the great dispersal, trampled over fragmentary gellings of scraped, scarred survival. They have faced and assumed all the moulded postures of rebellion, some true, the majority false. They see and they are the half-moulded, half-pushed egos ravaged, broken by penury and bilious credit alike, non-entities bloated by the gas of half-digested models. Hypochondriac anarchy is counterpointed against real estate investment. Grimy grinding between half-bars, petulant hisses and spits, infatuous hair-splitting copyright wrangles. All the oceans are now a dull, murky grey. My mirror focuses me on those who struggle to crack their frames. After they had succeeded, they became retrospectively embittered by their flecked rainbow bubble success, gazing on the fragments of their broken frames, splinters and paint-gunged sawdust. I recall the background of massed, bulging bin liners during the dustman strike, garages filled with howls of desperation, sometimes honed by loose connections, flip sight of the synchronicity of amplifiers and diesel engines. Slouching in his squat, remote control bleeping the organic video camera, inside his cranium, teenage jab of a first jack plug insertion. First flash of the PA, fear of the private self, terror of the shrieking, waving public aura, desperation the stifling refuges of comfort. None have escaped jittering through the lash of the broken string, trembling through the rampaging feedback, flailing at the short circuit. Decades of fashion, whirling, defying linearity through beaming contradictions of retro, I see faded tints of rockabilly grease, crowning abandoned beer bellies. They prod my remote memories of picture post. Some were told, we like you, but I'm afraid we can't sell you. Some opted for clinical coiffure. We discovered pinstripes. Some huddled in benefit propped withdrawal with all its worn gentility. Low-profile managers and accountants modulated between the two poles of fashion. I thought that 60s song, The Free Electric Band, was really quite silly, though it did highlight the emptiness of Bogus Rebellion. How many saw through it? How many will always respect a hit when the revulsion it engenders is there for all to see? When I started out, there was none of today's demystifying biography around, but then all was sneered at by the gagged and sheltered as helpless pawns, gaga narcissistic cretins, 
Now so many on both sides are bloated with fictitious wisdom. Initially ridiculed with infantilizing smiles, gagged and muffled as a noise nuisance, crass shatterers of the translucent porcelain palace of taste. Could time go on, rolling its wheel, catching up with its own tail, when rejection melted into acceptance, when relentless clockwise motion engendered an anti-clockwise mirage? Heralded by cumulative shredded eardrums, the waves have rolled, the boundaries of censorship have been pushed to subfly over walls so vulnerable to graffiti. Man-handling battered sound systems huddle under their frayed tarpaulins. <laughs>